Welcome to Om Times TV, a division of Om Times Media and Broadcasting. Welcome to the No BS Spiritual Book Club's live streaming interview series, where leading new thought teachers, speakers, and authors share the intimate stories behind the 10 best spiritual books that inspired them the most on their spiritual journey. From well-known classics to hidden gems you might never have heard of, the No BS Spiritual Book Club saves you time and money by sharing reliable recommendations from those who've walked the path before you. The No BS Spiritual Book Club, the only No BS guide to the best spiritual books to inspire your own journey of self-discovery. Here's your host, founder of the No BS Spiritual Book Club, Sandy Sedgebeer. Okay, cool. Hi, everybody. Hi. Good. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, let's talk about what your um, uh, what it was like for you to have to choose ten books. I understand you regard it as no small feat. Oh, goodness, there's just too many of them. I had to drop some really good books. I, um, you know, I lost Graham Hancock along the way, which kind of upset me. But I thought these ones were more. I bet he's most upset about that. I was sad about it. I was like, fingerprint of the gods is amazing, but I don't have space for it. So I had to throw out that amazing, amazing book. So so, what was, yeah. What was your criteria? <laughs> the ones that impacted my work intrinsically. It's the I've I I I geek out on a lot of spiritual books all the time. I tend to listen to them by audio um because I just can't retain things when I read them, but I, I'm better when I hear them. And I just constantly either have a podcast or a book playing. Um, so I'm always studying, always researching and a lot of a lot of this um, a lot of the books have really influenced my my journey and my healing work that I teach. Okay, so let's dive straight into your book list. The first one is Source Field Investigations, The Hidden Science and Lost Civilizations Behind the 2012 Prophecies by David Wilcock, published in 2011. What was it about this book that you enjoyed so much? It really, it's the science of how the metaphysical stuff works. How does healing work? You know, I was already a, a healer when I when I got into this book, but no one explained how how everything worked and how everything pieced together. I ended up one of the chapters talks about a pyramid. I think it was seventy two or seventy three degree angles on the pyramid, and I ended up building one of these little wooden pyra pyramids with epoxy and ended up sitting in it, and that actually was really quite potent. I had to break it down because it made me do lally. Um, but it's it's sort of the science of spirituality, and it was very. I like, I like to be able to know the science of it because I can do a lot of things with energy and magic, but actually knowing how it all works is very important and fundamental to me. So, what did he say was actually working there with the pyramid? You're talking about it's you know do, sacred geometry, yeah. I imagine. It's to do with you're not to make a pyramid work um so there are different angles on the different pyramids and they do different things if you have a lower um edged one like the ones in uh, in the giza plateau they are they are actually more to do with um i think it's one of them's wet weather and it, it changes the weather in the region and makes the weather much um calmer and the higher ones are to do with healing and it's spiritual evolution, but you have to make sure you don't have metal and wood. It's a, it's similar concept to an organite. You have to make sure that you either have all organic or all inorganic materials from it. So you either have to make entirely out of metal or out of wood and epoxy and not use metal nails or screws because that uh, it breaks the energy going around in it. And then you can put things in it like there's a, if you put razor blades in it, then they actually sharpen. They can make diamonds go brighter. They can um, do all sorts of miraculous things. They, if people are on um, hallucinogens, it can sober people up. But it's, I mean, the book opens talking about pyramids and, in Russia, they did these experiments with babies who were premature and they were very worried about them. And then they were running out of the medication and put the um, this, this, the medication inside the pyramid. And actually those babies did a lot better. And then they ran out of medication entirely and just used pyramid saline solution and the babies all were fine. So it was really interesting, the medicinal uses of it and how things work in pyramids in general. 
But yeah, that's only it, one bit of it, but it's the science of spirituality. And yet it made you do Lally. I, I, I'm downloading all the time with energy. It's a constant thing for me. So um, yeah, it, more, it was just extra intense and I had to, I had to break it down because I was completely, I was downloading too much and I, and I, uh, it was very overwhelming for my body. <laughs> so you wouldn't build one and no. put your clients in it. Maybe it's good for clients, but they don't have the direct um, connection to the divine that I have. And I'm all, but I'm downloading magic all the time to get abilities. So I, I'm already supercharged and it just made me exhausted because it was just that extra level on top. But for someone who's not me, it's probably quite useful. <laughs> mm. Okay. The Biology of Belief, book number two by Bruce Lipton, published in 2005. Um, quite a game changing book. Yeah. Yeah, it's about how belief, well, belief is a very, very important thing within healing. And it's about, yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. It's it's about how um, beliefs change everything in your body and about how it's thoughts that make the difference in in how our, our brains work and, and how everything is. It's, it goes into detail about how cells, like if you have, we have this idea that the nucleus of the cell was a, was the brain of the cell and it's the nucleus that tells everything what to do and it goes into detail about the cytoplasm the 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 skin around the outside the shell around the outside of the, of the cell and it's really that which tells tells the cells what to do and so he was doing experiments i think in the 80s where he was taking liver cells and putting them to a, um, a culture like a petri dish with like lung cells and just moving them around and you'd expect liver cells to make to continue to be liver cells but when he moved them into lung cells they became lung cells because it's a cytoplasm which was um which was controlling everything with within the cells which was completely revolutionary and he's the father of epigenetics so um and then it's also about what how our thoughts are affecting things so it's it's the culture it's it's what's going on around it and how our hormones so we had the stress hormones and that can affect our cells and how the whole of your body works a lot from your brain um he, yeah bruce lipton's got some really interesting books and he always uses the when phrase about if you um give me a child until seven, I'll show you the man. It's like what we get in the very early stages of our life completely programs us for everything, all of our behaviors, all of our wellnesses and how diseases come from thoughts. Largely. So when did you, so it's fascinating. <laughs> when in your career God. did you come across this book? Goodness, now you put me on the spot. Early on, early on, I've been to some talks with Bruce Lipton as well. So I've, um, I, I did that a long time ago. I went to a number of his talks and I've read a number of his books. So um, when would I have gone to his talks? 2010, when did it come out? I think I got it quite early. Hmm. So, and so you found them very um, inspirational for what you're doing now. Yeah, because it's the science. I geek out on all of this sort of stuff. I want to understand how, you know, I think emotions are the um, are the cause of disease. Belief and emotions cause disease, as far as I'm concerned, which I've got from a lot of these yeah. different books. They, they all come, to, they all come to the same thing, which I found really interesting when I gathered this list. And I just went, oh my goodness, they all just talk about belief and belief being the root cause of disease. But it all comes from different angles, which was absolutely fascinating. Yeah, well, I think it's, um, you know, becoming quite accepted now that emotions and the energy from that are the cause of most of the problems. Um, so many of your books are on a similar subject. Number three is metaphysical anatomy. Your body is talking. That's my listening. textbook. That's the one I refer to that all the time by Yvette Rose. It's a wonderful, wonderful book uh, that tells you what emotions cause each disease. And I've been using that as the textbook within Divine Empowerment for um, a long time um, since it probably came out around then. So it's very, very useful. And it just tells you why we have these illnesses. And I've, um, I've created something called my grand theory of disease and figured out how diseases work and what diseases are, um, having sort of worked with this book for a long time but it's emotions that cause diseases and they come in a gas a liquid and a solid so gas-based diseases are thought-based diseases so when you hang around somebody who's sad or angry or upset you can feel it immediately you can a depressed person can pull you down a happy person can make you feel great um 
then you've got so it's like so anxiety and depression are all gas based diseases that sort of hang around in the air around you and then you've got a liquid based disease something like a backache or a literal or a, um, a cyst which is literal ball of fluid and backache is about not feeling supported so all of your thoughts all of those gases around not feeling supported all gather in your back um to make you um, when you have all those thoughts about not feeling supported, you'll gather in your back and that gives you the backache because backache moves. It behaves like a fluid. Sometimes it's a two out of 10. Sometimes it's a 10 out of 10. It's sometimes it moves up, down, left, right. It moves around the body. It behaves like a fluid. It comes in and out according to how your day has been often. And a cyst is a literal ball of fluid. So that's a liquid based disease. Then you've got a solid based disease, which is like a tumor. But all it is to, from, to go from a gas to a liquid to a solid, the molecules slow down and cool down and they get more and more compressed as you get stuck in a, in a mindset of trauma for a long time. So this book sort of helped me form that because I, uh, yeah, because it just tells you the emotions behind everything and it's emotions that cause disease. And I've also been able to use that work and delete a lot of different diseases by reading that textbook to people on whatever illness they've got, and then deleting the associated emotions, people's diseases often fall away from them. So that's a really useful book and my textbook within Divine Empowerment. So we'll talk about um, how you actually delete these diseases a little bit later, um, because that's quite interesting. So number four yeah. is the true power of water, healing and discovering ourselves, Masaru Emoto, published in 2003. That's snowflakes. That is basically what he did was he figured out how to make snowflakes and you have to hyperfreeze water and then let it defrost a little bit and then he photographed it. And then he wrote different words on bottles. So he used distilled water, which always makes the same sort of snowflakes and wrote love and hate on the bottles, left it for 24 hours and photographed it. And amazingly, the snowflakes for positive words made absolutely uniform, gorgeous snowflakes. And the ones for negative words made horrible blobs and just sort of there, there was no structure to it, no symmetry to it. Um, and how our emotions are really affecting us, the positive ones actually change the crystalline structure. And as our bodies are made uh, from around 70% water, how is that affecting us physically by just the self-deprecating thoughts. It kind of goes back to the same thing. But, and then they did prayers for different water and the waters would change. Uh, and then they've also do a thing where they, um, you write negative, like I have a, 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 like a jar, a jug of water and plants and you write love on one of them and hate on the other one and then water the plants with them. And the one that has hate withers and dies. It's just showing that the crystalline structure actually changes by the words said to it or written on it and that's just crazy just because we're made out of water so much so how we talk to ourselves will affect us on a crystalline energetic and then physical level so tell me the impact that knowledge had on you it's wild it's it's a picture book it's just photographs of snowflakes and it's just like beliefs thoughts they actually completely change your wellness in your body. If you're, I mean, I have a thing where I, I think happy people don't really get sick. It's unusual for people who are really happy to become ill. And I think it's because they have positive thoughts a lot of the time. And I think that changes your body. Or if you have negative thoughts, that changes your body. So often people get horrible diseases after they have an, a huge tragedy. And I think it's because they get fixated and stuck thinking about the horrible thing that happened. And then they get sick as a result of that. So the way we think, the way we talk to ourselves actually changes our body fundamentally. It's well, wild. that's certainly... And it's proof of it. It's like the physical proof of it. You're seeing it in a picture form. So there's no disputing it. It's amazing. So you had a, a snowflake um, printed on your bank card. My bank card has a snowflake for truth on it. Yeah, I did that years ago. And um, yeah, I probably should have put abundance on it, but I didn't. I put inspired, inspired by this book? Yes, absolutely. I took, the, I took one of the pictures off, uh, off, off the website from, from his book. Yeah. And what have you noticed? I don't know truth is well truth's coming out in the world now it's taken a decade um <laughs> it seems to be a lot of truth and um yeah, i think truth is really important i have a 
I'm very keen on the truth and I, I, I refuse to lie. I'm not interested in that sort of stuff. I think it's, it's authenticity is very, very important. And I think we're now coming into an age of authenticity. So I'm very happy about that. Well, I think it's becoming very apparent to people, even if they don't know why they think someone's being authentic or inauthentic, there is an energy exchange going on that they're responding to. Yeah, we're feeling it. You can we're feel it. it. You can feel when someone's yesing you, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So book number five, The Indoctrinated Brain, How to Successfully Fend Off the Global Attack on Your Mental Freedom by Michael Nails, 2023. This was published that fairly recently. This is an this is an interesting one because it was talking about pre-traumatic stress disorder because we're all familiar with post-traumatic stress disorder but basically um you if you're told that your behavior is going to be causing trouble like for example we had all this stuff during covid which was saying if you don't take take the jab or if you go and see grandma you're going to kill grandma so everyone's watching the news and like oh my god i'm going to kill grandma you haven't actually done anything you've sat in your house you're watching the news but you get super stressed out about a potential which hasn't happened in any way or you're nowhere near the situation and and you can actually get pre-traumatic stress disorder from that so you can actually traumatize yourself just thinking about the potential of something happening, not actually even doing it. And that actually shuts down people's brains and makes them not as smart. Okay. And then they become indoctrinated and it's easier. You know, fear will, it paralyzes you. It stops you from thinking clearly. Um, and then you become more malleable and almost like a sheep doing as you're told. And I think that they may have used, I think that the nefarious ones may have used that on purpose to try and manipulate people and then they can't think as clearly. And I think people's, some people's brains are not as clear as they used to be. And I think that it's stress and trauma as well as various other things. But um, I think stress and trauma, it just stops your brain from working because it, it's almost sort of, it compresses it. It compresses your thoughts. You've got less space in your mind to be thinking about different things. You've got less creativity. You've got less joy because you become, a lot of your mind space gets taken up with this stress. And then you need, oh, I delete traumas and stress. So I think that's really, really important to give people a clean blank slate. But I didn't realize that pre-traumatic pre stress disorder was a thing. And just worrying about something happening can actually um, make you not be able to think clearly, not be able to rationalize to people who have got the, um, what do they call it? When their brains, their brains aren't working properly like mine right now. Um, when they, um, you, you, you can't talk to them. You can't communicate with them. They just go, la, la, la. They just can't hear you. Well, they, um, yeah, you yeah, yeah, they can't that's, compute. That, they can't compute it. And actually, you're trying to have a sensible conversation with people. But if they've got a lot of stress, they just don't have the mind space to be able to comprehend new information. Yeah. And that's well, what that book talks about. It's really interesting. It's a great control mm -hmm. mechanism. I mean, you look at children and people, you know, when they're telling a child off, you know, and they think that the child is listening to them. The child isn't listening to them because they're so paralyzed with fear, you know, at this big yeah. adult being angry with them that, you know, the capacity to think has gone. And that's what's yeah. happening to lots of people. And, and there is a lot of fear based um, information that is, you know, yeah. filling the world right now. Does he does he actually go into how people can free themselves of that? Um, I'm not sure because I, I can't remember. <laughs> I but the thing is with a lot of the books, like uh, even if they have different techniques, I I have my own techniques. So I sort of, you know, cherry pick the things which are important to me within a book and I can delete. So from that, I decided to delete to create a new energy to delete all fear which is what I can do now, delete all, so you can do all the fear, because fear is the one, the emotion that underpins all different, all the emotions, so like grief, guilt, abandonment, whatever it is, if you sort of trace it back, it always goes back to fear, because you've got two master emotions, love and fear, so uh, if you can delete all fear, then everything else, which then comes off it, dissipates, and then people can think clearly, and their minds work, and they become a lot more loving, happy, um, kind fear prevents you from being kind and kindness is very important to me yeah yeah 
Number six, psychedelics, the revolutionary drugs that could change your life. A guide from the expert by David Nutt, published again just last year. I like Professor Nutt. He's very fascinating. Um, yeah, he's written... That book is really interesting about how psychedelics work. It's about therapy and how psychedelics can work with uh, work with therapy. One of the interesting things, which I thought was completely baffling in that book, was about how you actually have the same effect. You'd think that DMT, which is a drug that you smoke, which takes people into different dimensions immediately. Like uh, I know I have a friend of a friend who ended up living on a space station. It's like it's about a minute or three, but he ended up having this whole life on the space station. And then he came and he met an alien lady. They went on a few dates. They had a few kids, like taking the kids to school. He did about 20 years on a space station. <laughs> um, and actually, that was um, only in a couple of minutes. And then he came back and missed his wife. But then you're taking other ones um, like, I don't know, magic mushrooms or something, and they don't feel as strong. And it's because you go from zero to 100. The DMT takes you straight in but actually if you took it at the same sort of rate like if you i don't know if you smoked the magic mushrooms or you have some way to administer it at the same rate then they actually do exactly the same things all of them they do exactly the same things which i thought was really interesting but in terms of trauma therapy this is um one of the most important they, they the the most futuristic thing people have at the moment because i'm about to tell everybody that what we do is even more efficient is um, psychedelics. People are using psychedelics to help with PTSD. It's really, really important because people can actually start thinking about their situations and with the, with the, with proper guidance, they can actually clear some of their traumas. And it's the leading research that they've got at the moment. I know Joe Rogan talks about it all. Every podcast he's on, he talks about psychedelics for PTSD. And I know that they, um, RFK, who's coming in soon, Robert Kennedy, has said he's going to decriminalize psychedelics for the treatments of PTSD. And this book goes into how all the different drugs work, which is just fascinating, and how the treatment of traumas can be done with psychedelics. Book number seven, The Body Keeps the Score, Brain, Mind and Body in the Healing of Trauma by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. That was published in 2014. And that's very popular with healers. Yes, five million readers worldwide. Um, I, um, yeah, I was always told to read that book and it wasn't until I saw a Chris Williamson podcast that I actually got around to reading it because I, I started listening to this podcast. Oh, for God's sake, I'll just get the book. And I was um, so shocked how underserved people are with trauma. My whole MO is deleting emotional trauma. I delete the, the, the energy which holds emotion in, in place, and I totally delete emotional traumas in seconds. I'm doing a study deleting PTSD in 10,000 veterans, first responders, and military um, and domestic abuse survivors on deletepptsd.com. Um, just I started that study because of this book, because I went, holy moly, what you're using to delete traumas is very ineffective. And the stuff that I've been doing is very effective. So I thought I'd change the face of mental health by actually showing people what I can do and deleting the emotional resonance of the traumas. And then you just think about it again. It has no no trigger to it, it has no resonance to it, and you don't care about that situation anymore. So this, that's triggered, that book has triggered me to um, start this study. So, because I just think they're so underserved and I feel so bad for, for, there are millions of people suffering, maybe billions, with all sorts of different traumas, and it's just awful, and I have the key to it. And so I got a big kick up the bum reading that book about really bringing this trauma work into the world because, the suffering is is unnecessary, and I've got the key. How many the people kingdom. do you have enrolled in it? And enrolled in my, I'm struggling to get people. Weirdly, and I'm doing it for free. I'm 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 paying for the I'm 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 paying for the study myself. I'm paying I'm I'm donating my time and efforts to it. Um, I don't know, and you know I'm <laughs> I'm very very good at. I I would say I'm the best trauma ther uh, trauma healer on the planet. Um, and because no, I've invented an entirely new way of doing it. It's, an, it's, it's taken me 20 years and I've invented something new and I'm struggling to get people. So if anyone watching this wants to be part of the study, then please do join because it will change your life and it works. The, the emotional stuff, it's never not worked. 
It's worked every time I've ever done it. I can't promise it will always work. I can't give you a guarantee if you want to guarantee by a washing machine, but it has worked every time I've done it for the last 20 years. So, so <laughs> just talk me through this. If somebody goes to the website and says, yes, I want to be part of this, you know, this study, yeah. what happens? They just need to enroll on the website. I, I'm doing either one-to-ones or I'm doing group healings for it. And then they just need to fill out a form. It's a standard government form from the uh, the US, um, yeah, about your, uh, from America. You just fill in this form and you sort of grade how your traumas are out of five and how you're feeling about it, write a little bit of information about it. Then I'm either doing one-to-ones or I'm doing uh, group sessions to delete their PTSD. And all they need to do is to... Um, give a title to the situation. So, I don't, um, you know, I don't know, whatever this title is, something in Iraq or uh, my boyfriend hit me or whatever the situation might be. And they just need to write the title. I don't need any more information than that. And then to grade it out of 10, how upsetting it is out of 10. Then they just play it like a movie montage in their minds. And I delete the emotional resonance of it. And it may take a couple of rounds, but it will always go down. Maybe it starts at a 10 and then it goes to a seven, then a four, whatever it is. And we'll keep going till it's down to a zero. And then they'll think about it and it will be an empty memory. It will be factual without an emotional charge it will no longer affect your behavior because a lot of the time because people have had such horrible suffering they end up um, knee-jerking reacting in, in a certain way and, and can be unkind to other people in their family and they don't even notice that they're doing it they just sort of go into a reactionary state and that just goes and the trauma they think about it and it, it doesn't affect them anymore they're not, no longer haunted by it things like flashbacks finish um, dreams finish uh, nightmares finish uh, and it just goes and it goes really easily. And I've developed that. That's why I'm doing the study, because we need to change so the mental health because if, it's not working. If this is, um, you know, the subjective experience, what sort of uh, in order to get that study, if you reach 10,000 people, which is a lot of people, um, you know, in order to get that um, credentialed or, you know, validated in certain circles, what are they going to require from you? Is somebody's subjective opinion of what happened to them enough? I don't know. But the thing is, the whole thing about PTSD is a subjective opinion. You can, it's, you just fill in these forms and say whether you've got it or whether you don't. Mm. But I'm looking for sponsorship for it. I'm looking for people who know how to write studies for it. I'm just starting to do the work because I just had the voice of God telling me to do it. So I'm doing as I'm told. I am, I am potentially in talks with some quite senior people within the government. So I think I'll probably be working with them shortly. Okay, book number eight, <laughs> lovely yep. book. The Physics of Miraculous Healing, How Emotion, Mind and Spirit Enable Unlimited Self-Healing by Joseph Selby, published this well, year. Well, you recommended this book. <laughs> I did recommend this book. It's a very good book, yeah. Yeah, it's that goes into belief about how beliefs create diseases. It's absolutely fascinating, and I just still... I, I can't fathom how the people with multiple personality disorder, how that they can, there's an, he, he gives this, um, this example about a person who has in one personality is blind and in another personality, which they switch to in a, in a second is sighted. And it's a billion neurons that switch on or off. Yes. How the hell is that? That just doesn't make any sense to me. And then people who have track marks from being a heroin addict, however, they've never taken heroin. So they switch between one personality and then suddenly scars, track marks, moles appear on their skin from one to another because they fully believe that they are in a personality who is an addict, having never taken the drug. Yeah. And then there are people who've got anaphylactic shock from things like um, orange juice. And that's completely wild that you can go that you're that you can change so quickly and i was to, i actually spoke to joseph and we were talking about potentially in one personality a tumor appearing and disappearing in a in a second and it's your full belief that makes those things happen so if you can i don't know how to do it i'm working on belief and that's what my new my new class was it was seeing if i could crack beliefs because if you can actually fully and completely delete a belief you may be able to do instant healing so that's where I'm sort of going with that. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a fascinating subject, why people believe what they believe and how to get them to change their mind. It isn't easy. But, I mean, belief is a powerful tool. Well, also, um, there's a guy called um, Dr. Hammer, who's a German doctor, and he was saying that he thought that secondary cancers um, were because you're told that you've got cancer. So the very fact of being told that you've got cancer gives you cancer. So when they can say that the cancer spread, it's actually a secondary cancer because often they're not very close to each other and it would have to sort of go across quite a long way within your body. Uh, but he thinks that they get them just being told cancer gives you cancer. Being well, told you've got cancer gives you another cancer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a hypnotherapeutic uh, suggestion, isn't it? Um, you know, um, Robert Dilts, who worked with um, Bandler and Grinder um, on NLP, he his speciality of that subject was all around beliefs and how yeah. it affected people's health. And he had many many stories in his book about people who heard the word cancer, thought it was being used about them, and developed it. And then when but they found out it wasn't sport. them, you know, it disappeared. <laughs> and it went. I mean, it works even on a small level, which people can try at home. They've done sleep studies and they are looking at, they, they woke people up loads of times during the night and gave them very, um, you know, very bad sleep for the night. And they said to them, make sure you you wake up in the morning and say, I've had a great night's sleep, even though I had a terrible night's sleep, but just tell yourself, I've had a great night's sleep, I've had a great night's sleep, I've had a great night's sleep. And then the people who actually, but they'd had a bad night's sleep. And then, the, and then they had another group who also had the bad night's sleep. And they sort of woke up and were thinking, oh, I've had a bad night's sleep. The people who actually told themselves they'd had a good night's sleep actually had the reactions and their body worked as well as if they had. And they did it the other way around. They had people who had a great night's sleep and told them to tell themselves that they had a bad night's sleep and they were groggy all day. Even sleep, you can just tell yourself, I had a good bad night's sleep and that will affect how you are night sleep day so try it at home it's an easy one to do and see how it affects you and then see how belief can affect everything what you you know if you say if you believe you can or, be, or you believe you can't you're right you're right <laughs> yeah, absolutely um number nine the spontaneous healing of belief shattering the paradigm of false limits by greg braden have you spoken to greg about your um ideas no, I'd love to. How do I speak to Greg? Do you know him? Uh, I don't. I don't. I mean, I know oh, people I need who to do, but him. I don't. But uh, that's an interesting one. What did you learn from Greg's book? I, it's all the same stuff. I'm always going into belief and how belief causes disease. I, I really realized that there was such a theme to the books that I've read, and I didn't really notice that before. But yeah, belief underpins disease. It's the same story but it's just coming from a different angle, from a different author. It's amazing, but it's, yeah, we just need to work on our beliefs and what, if you believe you can, you believe you can't, you're right. That's the whole thing. And our beliefs will cause us to be poorly or it will cause us to be brilliant. And we really just have to make decisions about what we want and the sort of life that we want. And if we get stuck thinking about horrible situations and we can end up in trouble. And I mean, beliefs, you know, you believe, I know, I know that Bruce Lipton talks about this. If you believe that you're going to be getting a particular illness because you say that it's genetic and your mum had it, so you're going to get it. One of the interesting things is what is passed down is often the way that you think. So if there's loads of grief or guilt or whatever it is, but it's so it's the, he says about genetic diseases versus hereditary diseases. Bruce does. And only he says less than 2% of diseases are genetic, which are the ones we're actually born with, like dwarfism, for example. And the other ones are hereditary. And what's passed down is the way that you think. And then the way that you think is what causes your illnesses. So it's really, really going into how we're thinking and choosing our thoughts and actually taking some ownership and some responsibility for how we're thinking and actually how our lives are, because it really is our fault. A lot of these things, like if you're, if you know, if you're this, you're the CEO of your own life and if it's not working out well for you, you need to change some things. And, and it starts with your thoughts. Fire the CEO. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fire the so CEO. Yes. 
<laughs> the last book is uh, Joe Dispenza, Becoming Supernatural, published in 2017. All the same stuff, all about beliefs. And he talks about, you know, people developing illnesses because I, I know he talks, in, I think, in that book about um, a lady whose husband ended up committing very sick afterwards and how and then she got back to health and she was meditating every day on positive thoughts and managed to get herself back from being very very poorly he does it he he's always joe dispenser is amazing and i'd love to work with him but he gives people programs and meditations and mantras to be able to clear their beliefs clear their thoughts and just neutralize the what the, their thought patterns which ends up deleting people's diseases so it's really important. He does, he, we do quite similar work, but I try to do it very quickly and his is more uh, sort of stable over time. Whereas I just come in and whip things out of people. But it sort of shows you again how it works. And he's also using a lot of technology and um, scans and all these medical tools to actually show how when you change people's beliefs, you can actually help them get well or they, they can actually um, heal themselves from all sorts of different illnesses. And there's loads of data and science in that book, which shows you all these different studies and all these different people who've managed to heal themselves from the most awful illnesses just by changing the way that they think and meditating. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I think it's also one of the hardest things for people to um, oh, yeah. do in many respects, you know, to change a belief is, uh, you know, not an easy task. Tell me, when, I mean, this is your 10 books. We've gone through them all. Where did yep. this journey start for you? What got you interested oh in this arena? Um, yeah, I, I ended up doing a healing on a friend of mine who had burst her ear drum five, t um, yeah, five times. She'd gone to the doctor, the specialist, and the surgeon. She was in absolutely excruciating, excruciating pain, like she had a screwdriver stabbing herself in the head. Um, and she was, yeah, there was four and a half thousand pounds to have the surgery and 50% chance it was going to work. She'd had ear, nose and throat problems through her, through her whole life. And, um, I was walking down the street with her having, she'd had booked her surgery. They didn't really know what they were going to do in the surgery because she, they didn't really know what was wrong with her, but they were just going to do their best to help her. But they didn't, they couldn't see anything particularly wrong with her, but obviously she had these pains. Anyway, walking down the street with her in Notting Hill, and then she starts screaming and falls to her knees and says, help me, help me fix my ear. I said, how, how am I supposed to do that? And she said, you're a healer now. I've done a five-day workshop and thought it was a total nonsense. Um, and then I ended up taking to lose a restaurant, put my hands on her ears and channeling energy. And I started pulling out this thing that looked like a snake in heat waves. It was about a foot and a half long. Did the other side, did both, both, both sides. And it was that was in 2007. She's never had earache or ear problems at all since. And it was an energetic parasite. Back and that changed the trajectory of my life. Back up what? a bit. Sorry? You, you attended a five days teaching seminar on becoming a healer that you thought yeah. was rubbish. Well, it was nothing to do with that. It just allowed me to open up because I've got healing abilities, you know, I've got gifts. And that just sort of allowed me to see that there were Ooh. gifts there. We hadn't covered ears. We'd barely done anything. and But the idea had had sort of seeded in my head. And then I did something which was completely above my pay bracket. Okay. So how did you know that you had healing abilities? Uh, I just, my, she was just screaming and I just did what I could. I, it was just, it was very strange. Believe but I don't know. Did you believe that you could Sorry? do it or were you doing it because no. you needed help? I no, it was innate. I just I just ended up doing it without really knowing what I was doing. I don't know. It was very strange. The whole situation was completely wild. And she was just screaming and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. She's like, just try, just try and have what am I supposed to do? And I just put my hands on her ears and then I saw this little thing with it like a snake's head poking out of her ears. I was like, I grabbed it and started feeding it out whilst I was channeling energy. It was completely bonkers. So, and what do you put that down to? You said it was some kind of attack of some kind? Energetic parasite. Energetic, Energetic parasite. It looked like a snake. Yeah. And that was causing her ear problems, earache. And, and was that affecting her back? 
affecting her, sorry? She had a problem with her spine. Not her spine, sorry, ears, nose and throat. Nothing to do oh, with her, okay. her back. But she felt like she was being, twice a week, she was being stabbed in the head with a screwdriver. It was absolutely excruciating and she never had ear aches since. That was in so, 2007. Okay. So was that the first time you've ever done that to somebody? Yeah, that was a so, miracle. What did you make of that? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I was completely uh, shocked and... Uh, I mean, I still can't get my head around it. And it's all those years ago. It was wild and miraculous and mind blowing. And I sort of changed the trajectory of my life. I ended up leaving. I was doing TV presenting and modeling. And I ended up going, this is more interesting. This is more important. And I completely changed direction and became a healer as a result of it. So what trainings did you do? um i don't speak about that we fell out <laughs> but i i'm self-taught most of it i'm self-taught i i teach and i'm self-taught i end up connecting directly with the divine and and reading a lot of different books but i spend a lot of my time in a trance state i spent years not being able to get out of bed for days weeks months at a time and having very very bad body pains like delayed onset muscle soreness and being completely bedridden and completely my brain wouldn't work at all i was just fuzzy in the mind but if there was something like my mom's birthday i would have the energy to be able to go and do something like that so it wasn't like a tiredness disease uh because it would switch on and off if there was something important i needed to do but i was bedridden for a very long time years awakening my energy system and developing superpowers and now i've got loads of them and i teach them you're very confident in what you can do. So tell me, what is it that you actually do? Goodness, um, uh, it all stems from deleting traumas and traumas causing different diseases. I have a 100% success rate in that. So it's almost boring. That's when you're really good at something is when it becomes boring, but it's so new and different to people that it's um, it's really profound to people. But I, you know, my confidence comes from it just always working. <laughs> So there's, it's just, and I, I just, go on. How do you delete something? What do, what do you do? I do it by intention. You do it by intention. I just do it by intention. I ask, yeah, they, I ask them to think about the situation. I delete the associated emotions. And I was just filming a TV show. I've just filmed a TV sh show called The Healing Revolution, which is going to be out maybe December or January. And I was live on stage with a live studio audience and I was deleting people's traumas and diseases. Well, it was really interesting. We did lots of people's traumas. But then we had somebody who had backache and that went. We had somebody who had ADHD and that went when we were on stage. Uh, she was she was absolutely shocked. That her, she was like, Where the, where's my ADHD gone? I've been on medication for six years and her ADHD completely vanished. And everyone's trauma is completely vanished. We did somebody who had loads of grief. So when you get stuck in grief, it, um, the emotion gathers in your lung, grief gathers in your lungs. And I said, how's your breath? Because she had a lot of grief. And we asked her to breathe out, breathe in, and then hold her breath. And she was able to hold her breath for 24 seconds. And then she... Uh, we deleted the grief in her lungs. I had my team helping me. And then she was, within a couple of minutes, able to hold her breath for 52 seconds. So more than double within a couple of minutes because we removed the grief, which was taking up space in her lungs. That was pretty fun. So um, you said you had your team with you. Tell me about your team. I've Go got on. loads of students. Um, oh, I've got goodness. loads of students all over the world. But I had, I've got my top level, so um, I teach all these different classes, I've got 16, and some of the people from my top level came and helped, we had six, six of us in total, and they were backing me up with the energy, and they were being interviewed about some of their experiences, one of them's a doctor, the energy work so that I could talk on stage, um, and then we were doing it together to just speed things up, and they, they have the abilities that I have, apart from they can't learn new stuff, but they can do the things that I can do. So um, what is your goal? My goal? Well, do you know what? I've got weird lofty goals, me. I reckon I want I to teach everyone how to do transformers. <laughs> so I have this idea that hurt people hurt people. I think everybody is aware of that. I want to teach everyone how to dissolve traumas because I reckon we could have world peace. 
if everyone resolved their traumas, because only hurt people hurt people. So my goals are world peace. I know that's crazy. But I also, <laughs> um, I, I want to start working with that. <laughs> it's lofty. But I want to start working with the uh, the new administration coming in because they are starting to think about psychedelics for the treatment of PTSD. And I can treat PTSD without the need for psychedelics. So I want to start working with the new administration who are excited about using they want to work with veterans and a number of them, J.D. Vance and Tulsi Gabbard are actually veterans themselves. And I want to help them with PTSD. I want to start working with them and work on a large scale with the PTSD. Um, my TV show we've just filmed was absolutely amazing. So I think I want to, I want to take that one on the road and start doing theatre shows of deleting traumas and loads of people. I think we're going to end up selling that show to quite a few big networks. It's It was really, really profound because we were doing... We were deleting traumas and, and performing miracles live on stage. It was it was mind blowing, and everyone sort of came away and went, "Oh my goodness, that's really exciting!" So um, you, that's yeah. Clips gone. Do you do follow up interviews with the people who come on stage? You know, to see how they're doing a month or three months later. Well, we've only just filmed it, so no, it's only it was last week. I've only just got here. Um, we can do the emotional stuff has never come back as I said, and I've checked in on that loads of times. And I mean, the first time I deleted someone's depression who was suicidal, you know, I was checking in on her every day and then then, and then she told me not to. And then it was every week and then every month. And that was about 15 years ago. So it, the emotional stuff has never come back. Um, we will probably check in with them for future episodes, but we, we, we didn't yet because it's only been a week. Do you find it um, difficult to do it on yourself? No, dead easy. No? Yeah, but I, I've had to do all the stuff on myself and delete all my emotions and traumas and things. But then things don't stick to me in the same way because my vibration's really high. You know, I get bored of my own BS really quickly. And even if I do end up in some sort of pity party about something, I just let, laugh at myself very quickly. And so it doesn't really stick to me. I, I find a lot of humor, gallows humor <laughs> in different situations. How do you teach other people to do this? Uh, my website, divineempowerment.com, has videos on it, and you can watch the videos and get superpowers from watching the videos. And if you want to do level one, you can use the, um, the code MAGIC, just M-A-G-I-C, and you will get level one for £75 rather than 333 And you can literally just watch videos and in your pajamas and get superpowers. And you, you can learn how to dissolve traumas right from level one. You watch videos. So the, the top level I teach live and everything else is pre-recorded videos so people can do it in the comfort of their homes. I just, I ended up having to do it that way around because I've got people all over the world and time zones are very awkward. And then I just ended up making so many levels that I never had any, any time to myself and I only teach it once. So people like to get to the top level and be in a live, live class with me. So do you do you certify people in this, you know, in your method yes. you do? Do you yes. certify just the yeah. people that you're hands-on teaching? I mean, not anybody who goes no. and watches a video can get certified. They have to send a video to me of them doing a healing um, for the certification to be valid. So they they can do it via video and then they have to send, I they've got a list of what needs doing. And um, then they just, yeah, they have to do a healing on somebody and send me a, a video of them doing a healing on someone. Then I have to watch it and then make sure that they actually know what they're doing. Um, their energy always works because it just works because I awaken abilities within people because enlightenment is a losing game. You lose the parts of you which are not enlightened. So I just unlock people's energy systems. These things are within people. They're just locked away tight. So I remove things in people. So the energy works every single time. The only issues that people have is their lighting's not very good. Their sound's not very good. They need to dress a bit smarter, that sort of stuff. That's the only, that's the only thing I've ever had as a, as a problem with certification. It's just yeah, making sure those um, superficial things are correct. Where is your TV series going to be broadcast? In a, Good in question. The, don't know. We don't know yet. Um, we don't know yet, but I think it might be taken by some pretty big networks. I, the, everyone's very excited about it. It was, we're not sure. We're looking for placement on it. 
we had a channel and the, the channels come off air, but they are relaunching in January. Don't know. It will definitely be there. But if anyone wants information on it, if you go to the healingrevolution.tv, that's got the uh, the teaser for it and all the information of it. When we when we have that, we don't know that yet. And we're going to put up pictures from behind the scenes shortly as well. So yeah, just check out the healingrevolution.tv and you will find out as we find out. But it looks like we might be able to sell it to some quite major networks, both here and abroad. I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> and I love your confidence. <laughs> I'm very alive. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you were like before this. Um, I don't know. I've always been, I I don't know, I've always been pretty outgoing. Actually, do you know what? I used to have much more of a monkey mind. I have a quiet mind now. I think that the monkey mind, the self-deprecating thoughts, which most people have, does make you insecure and does make you doubt yourself. I don't have a monkey mind. My monkey mind switched off 15, 20 years ago. So I don't have all those those naysayers in your, in my mind, and I'm very determined. I just I figure out ways to do things, ways to fix different illnesses, and ways to um, to to get things achieved. And I'm relentless. <laughs> I, I believe in pester power, and I'm utterly relentless until I achieve the goals. And I'm a workhorse. So, <laughs> so yeah. what do you think <laughs> when it comes to conditions? diseases, whatever you want to call them. Um, mm. What do you think is going to be your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge? Yeah. It's what, what the biggest challenge I've had so far, and the reason I've done a TV show with live healing on stage is because it sounds too good to be true. It sounds like I'm talking utter tosh, which is a problem. So then I'm like, just let me show you, which is why I'm also doing these testimonials. So the people in the, the Delete PTSD study, um, we're all video. I'm not charging them, but they are going to be videoed and they have to talk before and after. And we have to do check-ins, especially with PTSD. That's a very important thing to be doing check-ins on, making sure that people are okay a week and a month later, because that can be a very serious situation for sure. And do, um, so it's... It, so I need lots of testimonials from people as I demonstrate and show people and then them saying, oh, my goodness, this has worked. And I just need to get more and more and more testimonials so people actually realize because it's a paradigm shift. What I'm doing is so futuristic that it just people can't get their heads around it. It's 5D healing of healing and it's completely light years apart from anything else that it sounds it sounds too good to be true. So that's been my, my, major, my biggest challenge, which I'm a victim of my own success, which is a great problem to have. <laughs> well, but I'm you know, working around it now. I have just finished, uh, just before um, this show with you, I was doing a show with um, Cynthia Sue Larson, who's the author of Reality Shifts and the Mandela Effect and Sue Quantum Larson. I, Sue Larson. Cynthia yeah, I know Sue her. Larson. I've emailed her before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Cynthia Sue's latest book, I mean, it's given, you know, there's so much happening with quantum science now, um, the research, and we are beginning to learn so much about what we have access to. She quantum so, jumped. I remember in one of her, her, her books, she quantum jumped and could play the drums in one. Like, do you, she, do you remember that situation? Do, that, that was so wild. She can do all <laughs> kinds of things, and so can we. So we're out of time now, but I want to wish you lots of luck. I love the fact that you're going for it. And, you know, keep happy. And I've also got my own book. I have my own book as well, by the way. And we didn't get a chance to <laughs> Anyone's talk about interested. That. But Energy Secrets, yes. Antonia, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for sharing your 10 best list of um, inspirational books with the No BS Spiritual Book Club. Good luck with everything. Thank you so Thank you for having me, Sandy. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You can learn more about Antonia Harmon's book, her private sessions, online courses, etc. at divineempowerment.com. That's it for this week. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer. I'll be back at the same time next week with another 10 best interview for the No BS Spiritual Book Club. Till then, it's goodbye from me. Thank you, Antonia. Thank you.